I too thank you for being here today. I'm Terry Cowley, a TMJ patient and president and co-founder of the TMJ Association, patient advocacy organization for the 35 million Americans suffering from this disorder. These Americans, 90% of whom are women in their childbearing years, suffer from excruciating and debilitating pain in the jaw, jaw joint area, and surrounding tissues. In our over 20 years, we have heard from more than 100,000 people. Their phone calls, letters, or emails are typical of the one that we received on Saturday. The patients say it best. Julie said, in a nutshell, I'm a 29-year-old female who has been experiencing almost daily headaches, fibromyalgia, and TMJ pain since I was 21. I have tried wisdom tooth removal, numerous painkillers, muscle relaxers and over-the-counter meds, a mouth guard, deep tissue and myofascial release massage therapy, acupuncture, cortisone shot, raw food diet, exercise, yoga, upside down, inversion table, and an isolated quiet lifestyle. I just feel hopeless about my situation, and I am losing a lot of heart. Please help. Woefully inadequate research efforts on chronic pain mechanisms and syndromes has left healthcare professionals ill-equipped to serve the sufferers. <coughs> In the absence of scientifically based treatments, people are served hit and miss trial and error treatments and sent on endless referrals. There are over 50 treatments, not including various surgical procedures and an array of medications without scientific basis that are prescribed to TMJ patients. The result is frustratingly inadequate help for those suffering from these conditions that are woefully neglected. And the huge costs to them and our <coughs> healthcare system are incurred. A 1993 study found that $32 billion was being spent annually on these treatments, which are unproven. In two th to put this in perspective, in 2009, the NIH spent 46 cents per TMJ patient on research. Lack of research about the effectiveness of various treatments is not only expensive, but it places a huge burden on patients, payers, and society as a whole. Women suffering from pain conditions face gender bias, and their pain is perceived to originate from mental illness. The husband of a woman in New Jersey told me that his wife had 11 jaw surgeries. She was in excruciating pain. So he and his wife visited her oral surgeon who told him, quote, there is nothing wrong with your wife that a good shrink can't cure. When the woman and her husband got home, he asked her, he's the expert, who should I believe, you or him? She went into the bedroom and shot herself. Several lives were destroyed by that misperception. The costs to patients go beyond dollars. They lose their dreams and hopes of careers, of an education, of family, of a quality of life, and even of life itself. This is why it is so important that cost-effective investment in multidisciplinary research be made now, and that there be a campaign to educate the healthcare professionals and promote awareness among the public about these conditions, as outlined in this report. The discrimination must end. Equity demands no less. I would like to now introduce you to Mary Lou Balwick of the Endometriosis Association. 